Sean Ruggiero, president of the Advanced Market Team for Family First Life. I want to talk to you about reason number three. So this is IUL Awareness Month, October, Family First Life, IUL Awareness for our agents. We have the four main reasons why agents should be aware and purchase. They should own an Index Universal Life. Myself, all of our employees have Index Universal Life policies. We've gone through the first two. Now we're going to talk about reason number three, long-term care alternative. Now notice I said alternative. Long-term care, an official long-term care policy has some tax advantages that a long-term care alternative, such as certain annuities or life insurance, does not have. That being said, there are some huge advantages to having uh, a life insurance policy that has living benefits, things for terminal and critical illness riders. And we're gonna go through, part of this we're gonna talk about is the pros and cons of long-term care insurance traditionally versus the pros and cons of having something like this. And one of the benefits is having this available. So let's continue on. First, the need for long-term care. According to longtermcare.gov, 70% of us, once we reach age 65, okay, will need some form of long-term care for the rest of our life or at some point during the rest of our life. <clears throat> if we look at that, the older we get, the higher that probability grows. But that means that if you're talking to a client who's 65 or you are eventually going to be 65 or your parents are 65 or whatever it might be, 70% of us will need some form of long-term care. Now, because of the lack of resources, Roughly half the time, a little over half the time, that long-term care is provided by family. That makes it very, very difficult on the family, and it's not the intentions or the wishes of most people as they go into retirement. That's usually because they've had either uh, financial difficulties or they've had a lack of planning. And as agents of Family First Life, we want to protect against both. We want to prepare against both. We want to help you have financial success, and we want to give you some financial planning tools. A couple of statistics that I think are important. Women, the average stay or need for long-term care is 3.7 years. Men, men aren't quite as tough. They can't hang in there as long. It's 2.2 years, all right? 20% though, 20% will need some form of long-term care for longer than five years. That's a pretty daunting challenge if we look at it and we look at the rising cost of health care. I want to talk about something that um, is a known phenomenon when it comes to retirement planning, when it comes to challenges in retirement and challenges with aging, and it's called the, uh, the retirement spending smile. Okay, let's go ahead and bring in the ink, and if you're retired and you're spending $100,000 at age 65, that is the peak spending point of your retirement. It is early in retirement. You're young enough, capable enough, you're gonna go out and travel to Rome, you're gonna to go to Venice, you're gonna to go to the Grand Canyon, you're gonna spend some time in Mexico, whatever it might be. So that traveling and that cost is at a peak. But then what happens is you get 70, 75, 80 years of age, the spending goes down. Well, of course it does. You don't do as much. You're not involved as, in as many activities, your spending goes down. But then look what happens. Your spending goes up. Why does your spending go up? as you get towards 90, 95 years, and then it goes up at such a steep extent before we expire. Healthcare costs, that's why. A lot of that is long-term care. That is the cost of healthcare as we get prepared for death. Kind of a sad thing to think about, but that's what it is. So going to the next slide, we can see this in a different uh, illustration. So this is banding our expenses. So we have, <clears throat> we have, Taxes, basic living expenses, groceries, gas, rent, whatever it might be, leisure. These are expenses that uh, we decide to take, uh, such as travel, and then healthcare. Healthcare is the, is the gray one. So if we look at these again, early in retirement, say age 65, and then project that forward to 80, project that forward into to our 90s or getting close to 100 years old, you can see that the healthcare cost here, which made up a much smaller portion of your spending, as we get closer to retirement, it becomes the majority of your spending, okay? Healthcare costs are real, they're a challenge. If we look at inflation, healthcare inflation has, gone, has grown by double digits compared to normal inflation, which has been traditionally over the past decade or so, single digit, 1%, 2%. So it's a big challenge, and that's where we have that retirement smile. 
So we know the challenge. We know that 70% of us are going to need it. We know it's going to create expenses later in life, and we must prepare for it. So what are we going to be able to do? Well, in order to be able to prepare for it, let's talk a little bit about what qualifies as a critical or terminal illness. Because when we talk about IULs and being able to be a long-term care alternative, we're talking about um, something that has a living benefit, and that living benefit triggers the ability to access the death benefit early. That's why they call it a living benefit. You're accessing the death benefit or money that is, is earmarked to be a death benefit, a tax-free benefit to your beneficiaries. You're looking at accessing that while you're alive, thus it's called a living benefit. So it's accessed in one of two ways. If, if you are, it's triggered if you have a critical illness or if you have a terminal illness. Now, critical illness is less severe, and there's a certain calculation that each carrier will use in accordance with what the IRS or the government allows to uh, how much you can take out of that death benefit. Say if the death benefit is $100,000, can you take up to 80%, and how much can you take per diem? Uh, that's all calculated. But a critical illness, something that would qualify would be cancer. That could even be, in some cases, non-life-threatening cancers, cancers that could cause an illness and some costs, but not necessarily be deadly. Uh, heart attack, stroke, tumor, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, there's just some of these. Now ask yourself, who do you know who has had a heart attack or stroke? Or if you're sitting down with a client, has the client experienced a heart attack or stroke or cancer or, or tumor, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's? See, these are very common, unfortunately, events that can happen and that critical illness can trigger the living benefit in life insurance policy, like an IUL. How about terminal illness? Terminal illness, more severe, okay? Different calculation, how much of the death benefit will they give you as a living benefit? <clears throat> the terminal illnesses, just a short list, uh, advanced cancer, okay? Something that might be in a stage three or stage four where it becomes terminal. Dementia, pulmonary diseases, heart diseases, HIV, ALS, and liver disease, just, just to name a few, okay? So when we get to face those things, how do you protect yourself? How do you protect your family? How do you protect your loved ones? What options do you have? I think this is important to understand for you and for clients that you engage. So what about long-term care insurance? If we look at long-term care insurance, uh, traditionally, there are pros and cons to everything, but traditionally, these are the pros and cons. First, it does have those tax benefits I was talking about. Now, long-term care is going to be reimbursement only. So that would be under the negatives, right? The reimbursement only. But what it does is it allows you to get a reimbursement and then the money that you spent on it, you don't have to pay tax on. That's kind of like a traditional long-term care policy. So just like a death benefit from life insurance policy, how it's tax-free, uh, a long-term care policy, a true long-term care policy is going to have some, some tax benefits to it. Uh, also, it has the highest multiple for a payout, potentially. So if you're paying a long-term care policy and then you do need long-term care insurance or, 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 or you need long-term care coverage and you're one of those people that you know, has over five years of necessity, of long-term care necessity, nursing home necessity, whatever it might be, uh, these policies are, are sometimes, you know, a million dollars or maybe even more. So they can give you a lot of potential coverage. All right, those are some positive things about long-term care. If we look at the cons, the negatives, they can be very expensive. Uh, I'm 45 years old. I shop some long-term care, and that's considered early, and I'm fairly healthy. It was more expensive than I thought it would be, okay? More expensive than I thought it would be. And many of our clients don't even look at it until they're 55, 60, or 65 years old. By that time, it's too expensive, period. End of story, too expensive for them. And there are underwriting challenges, all right? Uh, not everyone is going to be approved, and it's scrutinized pretty closely. They also might not use it. So long-term care, one of, the, one of the, 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 the knocks against it, like any insurance, say your auto insurance, is that if you don't get in a wreck, then you waste the money. Well, there are long-term care policies that can be structured in a way that, that there is some value retained, but a true traditional long-term care policy, getting the most bang for your buck and having the lowest premium so it's affordable, you do strike a chance. Let's say you're the 30 percenters who don't need it, the money's wasted. And that's a hard thing to swallow when you think about the, uh, the expensiveness of it or the cost of it. And also it is reimbursement. So you do have to pay for it, then get reimbursed. It has to come from a nursing facility. Uh, this is not indemnity. This is not something where you can just say, I can't perform two of six activities of daily living 
and then go ahead and get a check to, re- to, 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 to spend on that. All right. So with a with a um, a living benefit, if you have a doctor's note, you could get a check for, say, five thousand bucks and use that to pay your daughter or your son who is helping you with in-home nursing care. You don't have that same sort of flexibility with long term care insurance policy because you need to have it um, um, reimbursed from a licensed facility that is performing the uh, um, uh, the care, all right? So some of the pros, some of the cons. <clears throat> now, what about being self-insured, all right? What about just saying, hey, I don't need this. I'm pre- pretty well off, or I'm gonna get a big inheritance, or I've very, been very successful in my business life or in, in, in my whatever life it is that's allowed me to um, accumulate a lot of assets. But I ask you, I challenge you, which of those assets would you liquidate in order to to uh, uh, facilitate long term care, right? We don't think about that, but that's 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 really a tough decision. Uh, Amazon. I'm from Seattle. I bought Amazon early on. And I continue to buy Amazon. It was one of the greatest investments ever made. So I have hundreds and hundreds of shares of Amazon. Okay, it's now worth like three thousand five hundred dollars a share. All right. Wow. Isn't that crazy? I'm emotionally attached to it. When am I going to sell it? I would love to give some. Hopefully, some of the new tax changes don't take that step up in basis away. But I would love to give some to my kids or grandkids, right? I don't want to sell my Amazon to pay for long-term care. What about the classic cars? Now, I'm not a classic car person. I've got some vehicles I enjoy to drive. But what if they are? What if you're a classic car person? Do you want to go sell that to pay for long-term care? What about your condo in Miami Beach? What about the boats or the toys? What about your primary residence? Are you going to do a HELOC? Are you gonna do a reverse mortgage to pay for long-term care? What about your cash savings? But see, your cash savings is your security blanket. Is that what you're gonna use to spend on long-term care? See, we don't think about it, but when we actually apply some thought, even if we're wealthy, even if we can afford long-term care, we don't think through on which asset we would spend to cover the cost. And I challenge you because none of these assets are something that you'd want to spend to cover the cost. And even in the practice of doing so, it's easier said than done. Life insurance can cover that. It can protect you, it can add that shield and create a barrier that you can use so you don't have to liquidate assets, you can continue on with your state planning as you'd want and uh, take care of the long-term care. So an example of that, if we use, uh, let's come back to Mutual of Omaha's IUL Express. Fantastic policy, can be very affordable. Death benefit can go down to $25,000, all right? So in this case, we did, whoops, a $363 a month policy on a 68-year-old. Death benefit is $100,000. And as they go, and this 68-year-old was in average health, chances of them living to 88 are pretty slim. Let's look more at like, you know, uh, 81 or 83 years old. So at this point, they would have paid in about $50,000. And yes, they have $27,000 of cash that they could use for whatever they need. But that living benefit kicks in right here. They have $100,000 that's as good as banked. And if we go back to the other slide, regardless of how many or how little assets they have, they don't have to touch those assets. They have the death benefit that they can access. And if they can't perform two of six ADLs, if they have a terminal illness or critical illness, they can get it as a check. They don't need to have it spent as a reimbursement. And they didn't have to spend the money on a long-term care uh, policy that they might not end up spending anyways. Because if the person dies peacefully in their sleep at 80 years old and they never need a long-term care, they could have potentially wasted that money in a long-term care policy. With this, if they die, well then guess what? The $100,000 all goes to their beneficiary. So it makes it very, very good and very, very efficient for planning. So, want to get moving, want to get started? Remember this, we've got benefit number one, more death benefit. The vast majority of agents out there either don't have any life insurance coverage or are, are, are grossly underprotected. Go protect your families, get more death benefit, and IUL is a great product. Secondly, the one, the beacon, the one we like to point at, tax-free income, tax-free income. It's a fantastic tool to supplement your retirement and protect you from future taxes, which will be on the rise. And then number three, 
long-term care alternative. You've seen the statistics, you've seen the benefit and the value. Protect yourself and create a plan starting today. The IUL being the Swiss Army knife of insurance products, of financial tools will allow you to do that. But you gotta get moving. You have questions, do you want illustrations? Do you wanna get contracting? Email us, info at FFLAMS.com or call us, 208-551-5015. Thank you.